This is the Build Out West podcast with your host Tony Hyde from Evolution House and Land Specialists and Catherine Smith from Build Bright Builder Brokers. If you guys are looking to build in WA or simply curious to see what's going on in building, you guys are in the right place. We're here to give insight with professionals in the game, coming to give the inside scoop. Episodes are uploaded weekly, so don't worry, we don't skip a beat and you won't either. Like, share, subscribe, sit back, relax, and let's go. Hi there and welcome to the Build Out West podcast with your host Tony Hyde from Evolution House and Land Specialists. And Catherine Smith from Build Bright. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, early again. We're at, we're up and out in the early getting this stuff. I've had my large flat white. We are ready to rock. Isn't I bought good? it myself, so yeah. we are <laughs> we are winning this morning. This is good. Yeah, great. Hey, how have you been? Busy, good. Yeah, it's been crazy. It's crazy. Uh, I mean, caught much this week. We've been that busy. Uh, I thought today we've we've, we've chatted. We we'll talk about uh, we're getting quite a lot of inquiries of people, especially with the interest rates holding now and people getting that confidence back in their building game is how did they get out of the rental market which yeah. is like 0.4% or something in Perth and into their own homes uh, and yeah. people are realising well the, the, the price of rent now is kind of almost almost getting to the point of the the of, of building or buying and there's no established market right? Yeah I think stock. like right now stocks the right. rent pricing is so you know <clears throat> so high so you know people basically they're offering Saying six fifty a week to rent this place, you actually have to put six seventy five to actually get yep. get the property. And people are going, oh, look, if I'm paying seven hundred dollars a week for rent, I might as well actually look at buying. But I don't have that deposit just yet. Um, so we thought, let's go through what you can do if you're paying those rents um, and you don't have a lot of deposit. Because particularly now, because the rents are so high, a lot of people can't actually put money aside yep. to rent, yep. um, to save a deposit. So um, we're going to go through things you may or may have heard before, but we really want to make it like current as of the changes in July 2023. Um, 1st of July, there's been a few changes and a few options for WA residents, but other um, permanent residents and things like that. So uh, let's, um, yeah, crack on, get through them. I think we'll go, and and I know you're kind of over this stuff as well, is number one would be Key Start, right? I think, you know, there's a a lot of, oh my God, Key Start. It is renowned for having high interest rates and that's, that is, but that's to offset the risk of having such a low deposit. But yeah, jump on that first carefully. So Key Start is um, essentially the WA government lender for um, first home buyers usually. So usually, um, you know, if you go on your Facebook feed or Instagram feed, you always see sort of those first home buyer market builders advertising, getting your house with zero deposit, that kind of thing. They're generally pushing the Key Start product. Mm-hmm. Um, to explain it is essentially you... Um, get $10,000 when you build for um, from the government for, as a first-time owner's grant, and you can actually use that $10,000 as part of your deposit with Keystart. So the, what that does essentially is you're not paying a deposit out of pocket because you're actually using that ten grand that you get from the government. A couple of grand out of pocket, right? Correct. Yeah. In saying that, you do need to use uh, to have a couple of grand in the bank because you do need to put a, a deposit with the builder, yeah. um, generally fifteen hundred to five grand, depending which builder we go through, and then you do need a deposit um, to secure your land as well. Um, but that goes towards your mortgage anyway. Um, but honestly, most first home buyers use Keystart. Keystart is a great tool if you know how to use it. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, then things can get a little bit, you know, complicated, yeah. and that we'll go through that in a bit. But um, I like to explain Keystart to clients as like really like a stepping stone to get in because if you are, um, you know, looking for a very, you know, sort of stepping stone house or a simple um, foot in the door, that's the best way to get in because you really don't need much money at all. Pretty much now, um, I'm sure you're finding as well, you're getting those clients who are getting that five grand from their tax return and they're like, you know what? Let's let's actually do something with yeah. with this instead of you know going to Bali or whatever. Yep. Um, so it's that tax return time, and that's you know when the those key starters generally looking to build um, a nice package. I mean, like a few years ago, there, like probably eighteen months ago, probably seventy five percent of clients were were key start because yeah. the, the prices in W allowed us to do those loan packages, and the, the pay repayments were such such lower. Correct. We, but advice we always gave, and we're not financial advisors, so it's really just we're we're just in stopping in Google and, and and find out we're just really in it. And from experiences, we would get clients to come off Keystar almost as soon as they got their keys, like go and refinance because there would be equity or something in there. Or, or do you know what I mean? We've yeah. definitely done that. And we saw a lot. I mean, I think I spoke about Angela and the hundred ten grand she made, so she was late on equity in her house 
with from and just saying the keys. Yeah, and that's yeah, a perfect do, use yeah. of Keystart yeah. where, you know, you obviously know how to use Keystart to benefit your clients, yeah. whereas some people don't. And that, that's when, yeah. you know, I've had to redo someone's whole entire package because yeah. they've talked to someone that, you know, is not doing things for their best interest. Um, There's some myths about Keystart that, that are pro- that, that, that the younger the younger generation might not listen to mum and dad sort of thing. So. Yeah. Um, particularly with Keystart, it used to be about 480 was the max borrowing capacity that you could do um, regardless of your income. And there are sort of income restrictions as well. Um, now they have increased it to 560. So that is in um, the Perth region. Yep. Yep. So 560 obviously opens opportunity of what you can actually um, build and also location-wise on sort of layer size and things like yep. that. So the increase of borrowing capacity on Keysight has been a, a huge change um, because I know like I was like 480, like well, what can we do with that? Um, but now they've come to the market and they've realised things have obviously shifted. So they've bumped it up to about five, 560, somewhere there uh, for Perth region. So that's... Yeah, a big jump. It's actually something we can we can work with as well. Yeah. yeah. Another big change um, in Keystart is essentially they used to follow the four big banks in terms of their rates. They've now changed it to um, basically getting their rates based on RBA. So that actually has lowered the rate um, for Keystart, which is huge. <laughs> huge. Um, and they're actually um, competitive now. So that that's something because a lot of people have that stigma where it's like, oh, if I use Keystar, my interest rate is going to be significantly higher than if I went directly to a bank, which is actually correct that it was in the past. Yep. Um, now they're doing the RBA, uh, a little bit of a switcheroo, and they are a lot more competitive. So um, they're looking sort of the mid seven percent for interest rates, which is actually pretty pretty fair. To and, and, and like you say that comparing that to the banks and stuff, now the banks will have low rates, but you have to have a deposit. Now remember, this is because you don't have the deposit, right? This is what we're focusing on. Yeah. You know, that you've got five, ten grand in a bank, you're a first home buyer. This is what we're trying to discover for you guys that there are options out there. Yes. I think um, something also just to notify, if we're going to go key start option, it is for WA residents only. So that's um, a, basically because it's a, it's a government-built um, loan that essentially the... The government wants people to keep building. They want to help people get into their home. They want to back the construction industry. Um, but it's really for WA residents only. We are very lucky to have it because I guarantee you if you're building in Melbourne, you would need your 5% deposit or yep. whatever. Um, so we're so lucky that you can literally get in with five grand. Yep. Yeah. And a couple of, I suppose, a couple of things as well is you don't, it's, it's, uh, I think it's the government based, right, from the, the state, right? But they don't own your house fifty percent. All those stuff that's all gone now. You know they, no, they, it's they just own fifty percent. It's just a loan. It's yeah. just a loan that you pay a, a percentage on, like a normal mortgage. It's just a little bit higher, not too much higher now. And you can literally, as soon as you get your keys, you can remortgage if you've got the, if you've committed money or if you, whatever, you can remortgage straight away. There's nothing holding you. In. So those are two big things that I get a lot of questions, especially from parents of kids buying. Yeah. Well, oh, this and it, that that's not the case, and well, they, they they scrapped all that because it wasn't 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 working they didn't need it that was and that was there for when you was like the mortgage rates were 15 percent and stuff like that yeah right? correct so to try and help you it's it's an old model and it's not the case anymore the way to be smart with key start is really to use it as a stepping stone to get in right so what i essentially do is i say let's not do all the bells and whistles and getting the house up and running let's just get the house built from there, then you can build equity in the home, refinance onto, um, you know, a better interest rate directly through a bank or what have you. Um, but it's essentially one of the bread and butters of the building industry is Kisa. We still use it all the time. But the changes in one um, with the interest rates obviously decreasing and the um, the borrowing capacity increasing to 560 really opens the floodgates, uh, particularly at this time now with the new financial year. And and when yeah, and it makes sense now. So though that interest rate drop is huge, you know, I think that's an absolute game changer for. And I think that's more that the key start are probably seeing we're not getting as many deals coming through. It's maybe time to be actual competitive in that percent. Just addressing the market, get the first you know, miles back in there. Totally, and um, yeah, it just gives people more opportunities. So most people that use key start are really. Those first home buyers, because um, then they can obviously use the first home owners. Right? Sort of young couples, um, and they really just need that stepping stone house to obviously, you know, build yeah. their property portfolio. And it's a I, great tool. I think with you, think probably like seventy percent of my, my deals have been all Keith. Well, not my, not you, Clap, me obviously, but yeah. But no, it's just a really good tool, and it's definitely worth uh, 
looking into and, and asking us a bit more about it and we can certainly help you and engage you to the right brokers that would give you the, 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 the actual nuts and bolts of what it would cost yes. you. Yes, so particularly with Keysa, um I generally use like maybe two brokers because they need to understand how to structure. One, a construction loan is a totally different method mm-hmm. to buying a pre-established loan. But then obviously Keystart is its own kettle of fish where you need to obviously have your connections within Keystart because it's government. They tend to be a little bit um, timely, um, you know, working for the council. So, yeah, you definitely need to have the right brokers that obviously have their Keystart connections as well just to make it yeah. pretty, pretty smooth. So so option one is Keystart. Keystart. Love it. Love, it. Love the changes, particularly. I think it's really um, meeting the market. And I think you know, I think one thing that if you don't know about Keystart would just is about the repayments. You know, if you're if you already rent and you got you go with Keystart, if your repayments with Keystart say five hundred a week and your rent's four hundred, you're only paying a hundred dollars during the construction. You pay the difference between your your rent and the mortgage loan. So you're four hundred on your rent, the mortgage loan six hundred. You pay two hundred. You pay, still pay your, your rent, but you pay the two hundred. It gets you used to paying your mortgage rate, and and that's that's how they do it. So what? if you live at home and stuff. Unfortunately, you're paying the full amount. That's just the way it is. But if you've got a rental and you can, a private rental is uh, uh, a least rental proper one, then it, then it works for you. And that's how it. That's what. That's a good bit about Keystart is the rental. Yeah. Payment. The repayments, sorry, are a lot smaller if you have a rental. I think because it's um, obviously it's a government um, loan. They're really trying to help young families, yeah. and they understand obviously um, the timeframes to build, and then obviously to rent on top of it. You know, they work with you yeah. to obviously get your keys in the hand. So, um, and if and if the RBA starts dropping the rates, their rates will drop. They'll match with. Yeah, correct. Rates. So there's there's benefits. I think there's more benefits for a first home buyer. Now that the changes have come into yeah. place, it it opens my options. You know, because I always have um, key starters coming through. But it's like, what can I do for four eighty, five sixty? Absolutely, like there's so many and, more options now. And when we found this out the other week, there uh, we phoned each other. We're just like. This is a game changer. This is what needed to be done. This is opening the doors. First home buyers are going to come back in the market, which is good because we know there's a lot of investors out there. First home buyers still need to build. They still they they will keep the economies going and all the first home buyers are moving on, right? Yeah. Um, okay, let's go to option two, which mm. is our low deposit um, home loan. So you know, in a general sense, anything um, with a deposit under twenty percent, you need to pay LMI. Very- LMI. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, Lenders mortgage insurance, which is essentially just another fee you have to pay on within your bank loan. It's definitely not a roar. It's um yeah, it's something we we love hidden sure. costs. But LMI, most people look to be honest, don't have twenty percent. You know, if you're looking at a five fifty package, that's eighty ninety grand deposit, which is you know not very common. Um, who, who, who saved that? If you have, well done. Yeah, I mean, good for you. Big deals. Yeah, speak to me. Um. But with low deposit, um, essentially, instead of having that 20%, um, some have dropped to 5%, but there are also 2%, 3% options. So that is almost on par with Keystart. It almost will flip which one I choose depending on the client portfolio and this is their situation particularly. Um thing with the 2% and the 3% product currently um, on the market is they do need to be owner occupiers. So they're more for the WA residents. They're not going to be for the investor market. They generally will need a, at least a 5% deposit. Um, so let's say if we're working off a 550 package, just to keep it simple, you need about 25 grand. Um, what's also great is that 10 grand, um, grand. first time owner grant is obviously applies. Um, but you also will need 5% genuine savings just to show that you um, can basically save deposit because you obviously don't have um, that much deposit because you only got 2 or 3%. What they actually do is they allow you to use your rental history as proof of rental savings. So essentially if you're paying $500 a week in rent through um, a real estate agent, that's 25 grand a year that you essentially will show as your rental history. Um so, yeah, there's ways to get around that. Generally, with the 2% option, what I'm finding now is you're looking in the mid um, 8% for interest rates, um, whereas if you go the 3% product, it's a lower interest rate. It's about 7.19 at the moment. So in terms of numbers on a 550 package, it's about $600 a month you're saving are, if you go the 3% option. And there are conditions around getting that 2% option and 3% or you can't just apply that. You've got to be like... Single mother, or 
that difference. No, is that, no. Is that the, Correct. It's different. It's just for owner-occupiers WA residents. So these aren't the first home loan deposit schemes. These aren't the, the no. second home schemes. These are, are just essentially bank products that are like product, Which are other products that are worth looking at, sorry. Yeah, okay. totally. Yeah. Um, but what I'm finding is, you know, a 2%, 3%, you, it's about five grand deposit um, in, in change. But it's like, look, it's actually worth you saving that extra five grand in a deposit because... You get you're saving six hundred dollars a week uh, a month in interest repayments. So um, you know it's a no brainer yeah. which one you can do. But two percent is always good, and then three percent is even better because you're looking at seven point one nine. So that's um, yeah quite competitive now for that one. So. That's the things I was talking about with the government schemes, the first home loan deposit scheme, which uh, is like five percent genuine savings, and as long as you hit the criteria, the government covers off your your fifteen percent. Or the guarantor your fifteen percent so that you don't have to pay LMI. Yeah. And the two percent is like a single parents one. But there's certain conditions like uh you have to be uh you have to be under a certain threshold for salaries. Uh, and it works for second home buyers and all as well. I think it's that's just, a whole other podcast yeah. in itself. Let's explore that later on. Yeah, we'll do um, get someone in. Because I know that now the changes that are happening with obviously the new financial year, it's worth discussing the parenting, Definitely. um, single parent um mortgage options and then obviously I, mean, I know the just the man to bring on to do that as well because he's all over this stuff my guy yeah so we'll have that yeah i don't i do I did digress but i just want to make sure that people listen that we're not talking about the same thing and get there these are two separate products Correct. and we are going to cover off that single uh, parent stuff in as well and yeah. I, and i mentioned the i suppose the third thing i mentioned there was a guarantor the government would do so the guarantor you can use guarantor i have a guarantor as, as someone to support you to help, help get, get finance yeah and how it really really works and, and this is really probably 80 percent of it there are a little little different things but basically someone has got the money or the equity it's usually equity in their house like your parents and they'll put up their equity of their house to to cover your 20 percent deposit so nice and simple way to do it say your bill is five hundred thousand dollars you need an you need you need 20 percent right deposit if so what you can do there is if your your mum and dad are saying yet yeah, we'll go guarantor for you they'll then put up their 100 grand so they're not putting any money up. They're just saying we've got equity in our house, which is four hundred thousand, and the bank will go. They'll value it and say, yeah, there's a hundred thousand dollars there. Yeah. Nothing impacts your parents. They don't do anything other than say, yeah, we've got the value in the sign of real saying we're there. It lies on you then, as a client, as a son, the daughter, or whatever, that you don't screw your parents over by not making your repayments. What it doesn't know is it doesn't drop your mortgage down to four hundred thousand. You still have to be able to service a five hundred thousand dollar loan. So your repayments will still be five hundred grand. It's just that your mum and dad are guarantor, guaranteeing or guarantor that hundred thousand dollars. So if you miss repayments or it gets repossessed or something goes wrong, if the house doesn't value up, they can go and speak to your mum and dad and say you owe us X amount of dollars. Now that's the last thing the banks want to do. They'll come up with other ways for you to pay off and stuff like that. But that's basically what it's there for. People get kind of nervous and scared about it. But if your mum and dad are going to give you that money as an inheritance, have a chat and see if it's worthwhile. Reach out to us and we can go through it a bit deeper. There are a few more other things to do. Like banks have to be able to be willing to work with each other, but that's what the broker will do. But essentially, that's what a guarantor is. Yes. Yeah. And when you're when you're getting the house, sorry, when you get the house valued, say that say you need a hundred thousand dollars and you've got a hundred grand equity, that won't work because they they take eighty percent of the equity. So say you've got hundred grand equity, you're only going to be able to use eighty. But if you've got four hundred thousand, they can use three yeah. stage worth. So that's how it kind of works, guarantor on a top level. Guys, I'm not going to go through all the different silos because that's really a, a one for a broker. But you know, I, they're getting. I know I, we, we're seeing it nowadays that more parents, more and more parents have got more equity in their houses, and the kids it's really hard to save up sixty, seventy grand and get on the market. I know. And the repayments are so high that this is a really good option for you. Again, and what happens is once you've once you've once you've if say you go guarantor and it's all good and you're paying your payments, everything's going. You get your house valued and you've got more than a hundred grand equity. You can take your parents off it straight away. You just remortgage and take them straight off it and you get your own loan. Yeah. So as soon as you surpass 100 grand or whatever they've guaranteed down, you can refinance and take them straight off it. It's very, very easy to do. And it's just a case of being accountable to your parents and, and making sure that you're looking after what they've done. You know, I mean, they've worked hard to get themselves in that position to help you. Yeah. And I think particularly, you know, back in the day they bought their house for $400,000. Now it's worth one point four, you know, because they've been there for 20 yeah, years yeah. and they've got a million dollars sitting there and they're saying, well, you know, instead of they're taking out and giving it to selling you. it or downsizing it and then giving you a deposit, they can actually just borrow against that. And um, yeah. yeah, 
it, it actually works well yeah. for yeah families. But what I like about the guarantor option is, of course, then you're having that higher deposit um, on paper, I guess, yep. for your loan, which obviously reduces any LMI or lender's mortgage insurance. Gets rid of all of that. Um, and there's just those extra fees that you can just put into finishing your home and making it what you want. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I use a mum and dad scenario because that's the most common one we're seeing. Yeah. There are other ways with your own guarantor and, and your own property development. What have you got? But again... That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the, the, the you know, the youngsters, the, the first home buyers trying to get in the market. Yeah. That's a really viable option. Viable, is that one? Viable? Viable. Viable? Go viable. Viable? <laughs> what do you think? Viable or viable? Look, to what be honest, you've got an accent, so who cares? You can get away with, <laughs> with anything. But how, But you've got an accent. Do I? Yeah. It's just a, an Australian oh, accent. Oh, it's just a local one, so no one cares. So. So, yeah, look, at, again, really, just a really short one today, like, just because we wanted to touch on those three things. Yeah. We could, like I said, I got sidetracked on that other option, and that's a whole other podcast that we will 100% be posting in the next few yeah. weeks. Uh, but yeah, but this, really this is the, the three options really more for, like, WA residents and sort of those first-time buyer market that people want to um, get into that actually want to own Occupy, you know, um, because what we're finding now is there's such stretch in terms of rents that people aren't able to save their deposits. But now we're finding people go, look, I'm getting five ten grand from my tax return. Let's actually do something with it because the rents aren't, you know, decreasing anytime soon. Um, we might as well jump the jump on and actually, you know, put our foot on the ladder. I suppose my kind of advice is if you're still living at home with mum and dad, I'd look at the low deposit option or a guarantor, right, because then you don't have to pay the, 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 the rent and the insurance. That, that's what I would kind of look yeah. at. If you've got a rental and you then have to build, key starts probably the way you want to go. But just because of that repayments during the build, you're only paying the difference. Uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> but again, each person, we look at each case scenario, by case. a case by case, and what actually yeah. works for them and go through that. And then from there, we, 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 we get it done. Yeah. So essentially, it's like if you are, um, you know, looking to, b- to build your first home and live in it and you're in WA, essentially what we do is we meet and we discuss what works for that person's situation, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And sorting out their finances is obviously the first step. Um, Because then we go, cool, we're working with 550 or 600, whatever. And then obviously we take it from there. But until we know which way we're going to go, Tolly's going to depend on what actually going to create for them as well, you know. And when you're a first home buyer, and I can't give you this advice enough, don't worry about building your dream home. I promise you there's a 99 percent chance you won't be in there longer than five to six to seven years. Yeah. Because you'll get equity, you'll naturally get a you job, meet a you man you want to settle you want a bigger house you have a oh, baby you yes. know and you, all yeah, that yeah you go, i'm not wanting to live here i want to live closely and that's just a natural you know what's interesting is actually read like on average you live in your home for seven years yeah. um with key starters it's three shows you what they make doesn't right it? and and i think that is really what we're sort of saying is you use key start to get your foot in the ladder once you've you've you know built a house and you've made money on it, get that house and then yeah. get something better. You know, and that's what happens. A lot of people they use equity or the money they make in the house to build the buy or build Correct. the next, yeah. and that's where the deposits come from. So yep. yeah, that's what we think. All right, cool, great chat. Great. Well, as always, like, share, follow, subscribe, whatever. Well, Hit us up. Yep. Send us a DM. We are definitely down to help you out. Alrighty. All right. So thanks very much. All right. Goodbye. Bye.